Afternoon everyone. Um, welcome to our final uh, pick and mix session. I'm one of your local farmer councillors and I'm also lucky enough to be a participant of this um, Good to Great program that was held in the Wairapa um, over the last 12 months. Um, we have until 10 past 3, which includes question time, so I'll give the speakers a 10 minute warning. I'd like to welcome our speakers. We've got Steve Gravatt here um, and Andrew Freeman. They are co-founders of Growing Good to Great and uh, the Good to Great program. And then we also have Jenny Gray here and she is the director and founder of the team building um, company. They will pre be presenting the Good to Great building and empowering teams learnings from the successful 2021-22 Wairapa pilot. So welcome. I'm Steve Gravatt. So uh, to give you a bit of background on this and how we came about this, um, Paul Crick, who's not here, he was um, one of the founding members, and Andrew Freeman and myself, all farmers. Paul and I had uh, worked at Teratahi for a while, me for about uh, four years, and Paul for too many years. But one of the things we have observed is, um, and I also observed it in my own career in farming, was you can get some really good young people out there and train them, but they can get wrecked in a farming business quite quickly. So we can, we can t think about how we can educate our young people or, or people changing careers, but we also need to, to learn our, the skills better in farming. So um, I think uh, a part, of, part of that we decided was a self-awareness. I have a, a mate who's one of the best guys you can ever meet, but he's an absolutely useless boss. But he's, he's not aware of that. He thinks he's a good boss. So, I think that's the same with all of us too. So we, when we went down this pathway, we decided we're going to try to help people create great workplaces where people can grow. And, um, and part of that was for them to become aware who they are and aware who they're working for, working with. Thanks, Steve. And so, yeah, one of the things we were very conscious of at the start was that um, uh, a lot of the ideas... They're not new ideas, and <clears throat> and yet, what was it that was stopping so many of um of our contemporaries and even ourselves when we were farming from um from utilising powerful, simple communication skills or or being more effective leaders? Even though you could actually quite readily search all over the internet and in theory access everything you needed, what's what's stopping um, farmers in particular, but heaps of leaders from making that change? And we realised that it's um. It really needs quite a special mix of both the information and the opportunity to grow those skills and grow the confidence and the support along the way, <clears throat> which is why you'll see in the programme we designed, it's very much built around both workshops, um, ability to interact with each other, and then coaching and mentoring spread throughout 12 months, because it's a really big job to, to lift the bar for yourself on your people management skills, particularly for so many of us where we've pretty much just being natives and winging it based on trial and error, which is quite a dangerous exercise to do when it comes to people and you're the employer. Um, and probably the other big context that you're all aware of is the employment reality that it seemed quite rapid over the last two, three years that um, probably the, the quality or types of CVs that are, that are turning up on everyone's doorsteps are not what they were hoping for perhaps five years ago and you're having to probably bend your people skills a lot harder and, and work a lot harder to get the best out of your people than perhaps if you just got everything you ever dreamed of walking straight onto your farm. So the, the need is, is increasing. <clears throat> so one of the things we've thought about is that you guys have probably all been to conferences, etc., and you come away all fired up, but two or three weeks down the road, it's, it's lost. And so... Um, so Back sometime in the 90s, I decided to change the way I farm around grass and how I used it and utilised it. And so I got a, a really good consultant on board and I thought, he can come and see me a couple of times, I'll be right. And he said, no, Steve, I'm coming to see you every month. I said, like, man, that's an overkill. But the thing was, he would leave and I think, man, I, what did Perry say? I have to put it in place. And then I'd be thinking, crap, he's coming back in two weeks. <laughs> so it kept me on track. So when we developed the, the programme... You can see we, we had contact with everybody uh, every month, once a month, and we had, um, we had six to seven workshops through the year, 
and coaching and mentoring every month. And we also provided an opportunity, got good funding from MPI to provide opportunity to uh, give advice and guidance at any time. So if someone had a problem, we didn't want them to wait until their coaching and mentoring session. We wanted them to call us then and so they could uh, tackle their problem then. Yep. And a, a really powerful um, part of that program was the, um, the expertise by Jenny Gray, who's a you know an expert in this space, and having her anchored at the at the centre of the program to really build a robust, simple coaching and mentoring model, both to to help guide the change, but for the actual um, leaders and two ICs to then take and and actually make some tangible cumulative progress with their people, and and pull out of the kind of random winging it cycle that that lots had been in, so that they could actually take the ideas and cumulatively um, make and drive positive change in their teams. Um, <clears throat> you'll see at the bottom there as well, there's seven trainee coaches, um, and they're a key part of, of this model and the model that we're um, expanding into other regions next year. And it's a really um, important part of the model in that it's broadening the, the capacity and capability to support um, businesses that need it, whether informally or professionally. Um, it's just such a big layer. The, the ability to access an objective person that can actually, you can bounce ideas off, um, kick things around and often solve your own problem. It's amazing how magically that happens once you can access a, a third party in a, in a role as a coach. Um, and, and there's so many great people out there that just need the, the core skills to rise from being you know, manager, leader, to actually taking the step to supporting another team. So um, part of what we did was to bring in a variety of speakers, but the important thing for us, that the speakers we brought in, um, they added to the message rather than give a new message, because uh, one of the things we decided on, we weren't going to try to have six sessions and teach people six new things. We're going to have six sessions and embed the learnings they have got, because it's quite hard to change behaviour, so we had a year of embedding those learnings. Yeah, for example, a speaker like Stu Taylor you see there in the middle, um, or perhaps even right down you know, near at the bottom, Jana Hawkins. Like their presentations, if you saw them randomly um, on the internet, you might look at it and think, wow, that's, ex that's exciting and inspiring, but it would probably just drop and stop, or it would seem, you know, certainly if somebody had showed me that when I was a sheep and beef farmer, I would have thought, that's really great for him, but how on earth am I going to get myself to there? And we tried to, tried to pr put those presentations in a, at the right time once they had a big context for the for the participants and and as a result um, the uptake and ability to begin to make you know substantial culture change like Stu Taylor advocates was really high um, with a lot of our participants which is really exciting um, but that list we've got you know that's what what worked in the wider upper pilot we would be where we're aiming to have a similar but varying list in each region, um, really responding, covering kind of core learning, but also responding to the needs in the group and accessing, um, you know, who's awesome and, and inspiring within each region. The, um, <clears throat> we tracked a couple of um, metrics in terms of how much progress did people make. Um, the blue colours are before, the orange colours are after. Three quite kind of simple but really powerful um, concepts we tracked there, um, understanding each other before and after, um, a huge jump, and this was kind of from both self-assessment in the teams and kind of professional review by the coaches, um, but the change is probably the important thing, there's really low hanging fruit in every team, um, both of understanding each other, the next one is teamwork, before and after, and the third one was the um, use of the effective coaching and mentoring to grow people. Um, and really three profound things to drive um, a positive workplace and, and remove a huge amount of the frustration that bubbles away as conflict if you're um, kind of striking out blind. And the biggest of all is at the very start, it's the understanding each other, which um, Jenny will kind of flesh out a little about now. Yeah. Um, and just while she's getting up, the big, the big piece for the understanding each other was the, and you would have seen on that earlier slide, was DISC profiling, which was, um, which is very much in, in Jenny's expertise, but it was a, a key piece that we had 
that kind of sits at the center of this model that that's a key to that graph back there of understanding each other how did that change so much and um, just so I'll just give you guys an idea of how this came together so for six months I had an office which I had whiteboards and covered with ideas and Andrew and Paul would come in and and give their bits and tweak it and change it and that so like it it was it took quite a while to build it and then Jenny came in and was a facilitator and that's what we're going to use her for for two or three of the sessions but end up she came to every session and now we're um, as we spread this over the region she's not a facilitator she's part of the team so Jenny come up and do your thing. <laughs> I'm Jenny. Um, I felt really honoured to lead this program and um, we had really amazing results. So I've given you a handout, so I'm going to give you the Reader's Digest version. You need an open mind, a sense of humour and a chat with the person next to you. So there are three things that make up who we are. We have a cultural lens, which is really important. We also have a generational lens, so my phone goes every day of the week and they go, these young people, they're so annoying, but actually do you know what makes them tick in that generational layer? And then we have the behavioural lens. So again, we say that we have a personality clash, but it's actually our behaviours that are our drivers. So in your handout, uh, and sitting next to the person next to you, I want you to think about what does it take to be the best leader that you can be. So this is what this programme was about, was building skills, building capability, and understanding yourself and what makes you tick, and understanding the people around you. So before we start, there is no best behaviour, even though the person sitting next to you might think that they're the best profile. It is what it is. It's about working to your strengths base. So this was all our programme was about, is how do I maximise the strengths? How do I maximise the strengths of the people around me? So we did just profiling, but I thought I'd give you an overview of the behaviours to see whether you can understand yourself and perhaps people that are already working for you, and then have that reflection Am I working from a strength base or have I moved into my limitation zone? So we are all four behaviours before we begin this and so we all have a map. So I want you to think about what your map looks like. So the most misunderstood is D behaviour, it stands for dominant. So these are the shakers, the movers, the high risk takers, what's the worst that can happen? Right? So they're out there, bold, direct in their communication, tell it how it is. Body language is more obvious than anyone around you. What you see is what you get. So they see an unfavourable environment and their strength base is change, fix, control. Right? So often they're the owners or they're the managers and they have no idea that when they become blunt, they disconnect the people around them. So they're heavily reliant on feedback and feed forward and yet we tell ourselves that they're scary and intimidating and we won't go there, but actually that's on us and not on them. The next behaviour is I, so this is Dan's profile over here who introduced us. So this is the most relational. So these are the people that are focused on the people, not the tasks. So they like a positive environment, they like to build a team, and they like to influence and persuade as leaders. And then S behaviour, uh, what teams are made, made up of the most, it stands for steadiness. So they're the people that see a favourable environment and they don't do conflict, so they want everything to be harmonious. So they nod this way when really they should be nodding this way. And they build things up and then they have a volcanic eruption and they raise stuff from two years back and you're thinking, hang on a minute, we're in 2022. But they've gone back two years when you became the most annoying person on the planet and they've started to make a detailed list in their head. So they listen more than they speak, but they're absolute team players. So then the C's see an unfavourable environment, and these are your people who are very analytical, and so they're very focused on the accuracy and the quality and what they deliver. But they see the environment unfavourable because they don't do change. So if it's not in the box, there's nothing outside of that box. So just have a quick discussion with the next person beside you and just think about what you think your highest behaviour is at work. We can all be something different at home. Let's have a quick chat to the person next to you. <coughs>
So the other thing to remember is we perceive people to be one thing, but actually we have to walk a mile in their shoes to know that their reality is quite different. So we can perceive people, but their reality could be quite different to what you think. And, you know, resist the temptation to go home and tell the people what you think they are in the house. It generally doesn't end well. Just give them the handout and go, where do you see yourself, and then have that discussion. So, you know, it's, um, so this was what we um, led our participants through. So, again, you know, these are shakers and movers. They like to get stuff done, preferably yesterday. They're big picture people, very visionary, and they're a very small percentage of our population. So, again... They like to take risks, um, and they like to be in control. And they like to be in control of people. And so they often start something, that, and their vision is in their head. So when you're challenged to work with them, it's about unpacking their head to understand where they're leading you to. All right? And so for them, they need feedback and feed forward the moment an issue happens. So the longer you wait, the bigger the boom. All right? So, you know, they are, when you're having your staff meetings, they are your pen clickers. They're not doing it just to annoy you. They're actually tactile touch people. So they have to get up, they have to stretch, they have to move, they can't sit still. So they, again, if their foot's going, but I can tell you, if they've got this little finger going or their foot's going furiously, they have not agreed with the word you've just said. <laughs> yeah? So they are direct shakers and movers. So... When they go into their limitation zone, they become blunt, forceful, and demanding. They do not see themselves like that. They see themselves as being direct and telling you how it is. So it's black and white, there's no grey. We all have this behaviour. Some of you it might be high, some of you it might be low. So that's an important part of the team. They like to get stuff done, they put 300% into everything that they do. And so for the eye behaviour, again, their strengths are to be friendly, so that positive, they are the ones that bring your banter to the teams. Time management's not a strength for them. I'm going to doesn't always equate with I have, because they're running around like a flea in a bottle, trying to scatter themselves across the platform and finishing nothing. But they are the ones that will lift the team up and motivate. So as a leader, you will be focused on building really good positive team culture and communicating. So their communication is all verbal, and they're visual. So if you want them to connect to your message, you need your big whiteboard in your meeting room and you need to make big fluffy clouds. doesn't matter what's in them, but they have to be different colours. Colour is very important to them. So for them, it's all about the people. And so when they go into their limitation zone, it's blame, excuse, deny. Yeah? So I would have done this, but... right. So think of the people you're surrounded by and how often you hear those words. So their relational strengths, they are the ones that will bring that team together and really focus on building positive culture. Your S, which most of your teams are made up of, again, are very calm, very humble, but under pressure in a crisis. These are our go-to people. They're freaking out inside, but they have the best body language, so you can't play poker with them because they'll totally slay you. Is they just keep really calm, right? And you would not know that they're freaking out. But they're the ones that really listen to what to do when there's an earthquake or a tsunami. And so those are the people you follow, right? And so they're team players and they're the most loyal people that you ever have in a team. So once they commit to you, they commit for life, right? So, but again, the challenge is, is they are conflict averse because they want everything to be stable and harmonious. And so when they flick into that zone, they go into their limitation zone, which is to overthink and worry about things before they've happened, right? So then they manifest things and go, gosh, if I'd had that conversation yesterday, maybe it would have. And so for them, it's, it's about knowing how to get in one-on-one -on -one and coach them to success. The C's, which we mix up C and D behaviour. So the C has that very critical analytical lens. So they're the ones where they, lo they like written communication, right? So everything, they're your emails, warriors, right? So they'll send you an email rather than speak to you. And so they think they're being really specific, but it might come to your inbox and it's got smoke and flames coming off it and you think, what's going on? And actually in COVID, we've forgotten that actually more than two paragraphs is actually a conversation or an attachment. 
So the longer you make an email, the less the D's and I's just completely lost, right? So C's only get what they've written, and it's very specific and detailed. So they need what your expectations are to perform at their best. They need the prescription. They want to see a plan that they're working towards because they're also focused on results. So when they move into their limitation zone, they get very sceptical. They see the glass as half empty, not half full. So have a chat to the person next to you. Who do you think you look like in that map? What behaviours are you made up of? is each of our participants got their disc profile which showed all of their map. It gave them a daily tool they could refer to. We built comparison reports for the team. So all of the teams also got their profile and we built really in-depth comparison reports. So when I work with you and work with me, what are your approaches and what can our roadblocks be? And so we shared with the teams over a cuppa. So, you know, we got to get to experience all these amazing uh, morning teas. And we went and we shared it with the team. And so that became their tool of choice. And then through the program, um, you know, the leaders really got to understand who they were in the space as a leader and, more importantly, how to work from a strength base. So um, I'm going to let the guys finish with um, a little video clip of... Um, some people, some are in this room, um, who came on our journey with us. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. That's great. Um, one extra thing to add in, um, we're talking about the leaders and two ICs. A really key part of the whole original mindset was trying to move past the idea that the farm owner or the manager is the leader and the only leader. It became really evident the more we looked into teams that the, probably the really important leaders perhaps where the most impact could happen. It could just be a senior shepherd that's got a key new employee right there underneath. That could be the very moment where you could have real growth or you could have instant churn if their leadership and communication skills weren't given a lift. So leadership, it's really broad right through the team. Um, yes, we've got a really, about a two minute video clip here which is actually highlight some comments that came at the end of our program from um, participants. And it kind of sums up in their own words what they felt um, the program gave to them. If I can make this play. Maybe not. It's promising. The cool thing that's been really cool for me is being able to take what I have learned and use that on other farmers in the community outside of the program or with um, workmates, helping them overcome their anxieties or see what's driving them and helping them to be able to grow as well. I love seeing people succeed to be a part of their growth and their success. Um, it's it's gives me a lot of fulfillment. Oh, I've found things out about myself that I didn't know that the DISC has taught me, that has helped me be a better person. How have I found this course? I've found it an eye-opener 
yeah, it was a bit scary just how much information can come back from so few questions. The impact this has had on our business, we've created uh, a lot more efficiencies when it comes to communication. We've been able to streamline our communication a lot by understanding who we are as individuals. For our business, what we've seen now is we're able to collaborate with people on our, in our team and get them involved in projects that we wouldn't have dared to before. But now that I'm able to change my approach to them and vice versa them to me, we're now able to collaborate others on teams that we wouldn't have done before. It's made us more cohesive as a unit. Um, we've, we've been really tight, we've tried to operate how we do things as a family. You know, having a clear path forward with uh, our challenges and the decision making around that and just really solidifying where, where we sit as a business and we look forward to the changes that we're going to see in our industry with, with anticipation instead of being scared of them. I've just been talking to Dan, my 2IC, about this sort of personality sort of things. Um, so when this program came along, I just sort of leapt on and thought this is awesome for, for the crew we've got. So all four of us have gone through it and you can't change your um, other people unless you know what change means to yourself. The staff, when they did their disc profiles, just couldn't believe how 15 minutes of questions um, could capture the way they like to work so so clearly. So that was um, uh, that was great. And the impact on the business, I think the entire team really enjoyed the the farm visit where we um, we went over everybody's profiles and and how everybody interacts. We understand ourselves better um, and each other better, and also um, our staff member who's come on board. Um, so I guess for us that means that will hopefully translate into. Um, really good staff retention. Like I've been hearing about this for the last year and a half and I have been hugely inspired by sitting over there. To, to hear what you've done with your teams is absolutely amazing. It's been tremendous, it's sorely lacking in this whole area for such a long time and it's just opened up a whole new world. You know the last round of um, visits was really interesting with weather. I thought I was going to become a submarine going up to be some pastoral but fortunately I followed a ute. And then I went up to Wide Eddy and I made a truck reverse probably about one and a half kilometres up this mud. I can't actually say it was a road. Jenny is an absolute treasure and I'm just um, amazed how she can read people so well in such a short time. And um, I think that's a fantastic skill and it was, it was wonderful to see that in operation. A highlight for us was having um, a whole team session with Sarah Donaldson. I, I was really pleased to see how some of our Shire members of our team came forward. And Got a lot of value out of the on farm visits. Jenny and Andy came out and, and you know met with the team and, and really um, helped us sort of think about and work on and, and um, have a better, clearer lines, clearer lines of communication and understanding of those people and, and their situations. Just having that, like having the outside people speak into your team, it's really helpful, I think, for everyone in the team. It sort of opens it right up, so we found that was really good value. Cool. Um, so, your yeah, last slide from us, I guess, <clears throat> just wrapping wrapping that all up together, um, the biggest message is that we're, we're really trying to build leaders focused on growing people and make that a core part of what businesses are about. Um, and there's so much more in that than just um, the efficiency of how your business can run. Like Underneath some of those stories is the, is the added layer of satisfaction that people get merely by making growing people part of what they're truly about. And that doesn't come and go with with a drought or a change in the dollar or a drop in the beef schedule, it remains and it's, um, it's actually one of the few constants that you can hold on to and is really powerful. <clears throat> um, and moving forward, I guess we're, yeah, we're, we are, are definitely rolling this out into a couple of regions um, late this year or early next year, which will initially aiming to be Manawatu, Wairarapa and Hawke's Bay. Um, so yeah, watch this space. Um, yes, yeah, so any questions or, um, or comments, um, but no booing, please. <laughs> How long?
course or whatever? How, how many days or <coughs> um, So it's a 12 month, kind of spread over 12 months, but um, the, the contact time is spread quite carefully through the year. So the, I guess the key was um, six wor workshops dotted throughout the year of a, um, you know, either a half day, there was a couple of full day ones at the very start to, to get the ball rolling, but then keeping it quite bite sized right through the year and yeah, definitely talking to our participants of when, when was the best-ish time to hold those. Um, and then there's remote coaching and mentoring um, by Jenny and as we roll out by the whole team, um, which is initially one-to-one, -one, but then um, yeah, via Zoom, etc. We also had to navigate COVID. Um, but we were quite fortunate, and one of the things that we did was we videoed every session we had. So if you missed a session, you could jump on the link and actually go, and some mm -hmm. people enjoyed listening to the speaker and then clicking back mm -hmm. on and um, just revisiting it. So if you missed a session, which, you know, it's, um, it's all about your day, um, mm -hmm. we had that capacity as we navigated mm -hmm. COVID last year. Yeah, we're just trying to get that balance between, you know, bringing people together to... Um, gather ideas and rummage them around together, but then very much realising that the challenge is back, you know, in the team, on the farm or in the business, you know, with the particular people you've got, and that's, I think, where the remote kind of problem solving and coaching conversations were incredibly powerful because it's, it's really quite nuanced. But we were finding out about you know, upcoming courses or through Beef and Lamb or how do you, how do you promote yourselves? <coughs> Oh. It's you, Steve. <laughs> it's me? Yep. Well, at, at the moment we're working uh, with Fed Farmers and um, to see if uh, they can be a partner with us, and they seem quite keen. Um, but I, I guess um, uh, uh, you'll probably find us online. We're creating a website at the moment. Um, how else would that find us? Um, yeah, certainly. I mean, this group, for sure, will be um, circulating any programmes that we build around the, the key beef and lamb network, which um, you're probably all part of now voluntarily or not by registering for the for the conference but um yeah the beef and lamb network is really powerful um the water up pilot to be fair the, the places just sort of went like hotcakes partly because the need was there and it was very much just quick shoulder tapping um and yeah we we, we can sort of only do so much in each region about 20 teams is the maximum to keep it at a level that we can really help create and support change um the other key character that we'll be, you know, certainly continuing discussions to partner with is MPI. You know, they were really one of the, you know, genuinely um, impactful initiatives they did do during COVID. We felt was funding us, which we were able to directly, you know, make some really powerful change for farmers. And you know, and hats off to MPI for doing that. And we'll be um, strongly encouraging them to do the same again. Wondering was he good hearing the little anecdotes from those participating? Were there some key principles that came through that helped improve their business continuity? You know how the teams work together. Is some of any key sort of three or four key messages that those businesses picked up on that made their businesses stronger or operate? Better? Yeah, I guess I give you one, which to me is um, them becoming aware of themselves and how the other guys are. So you knew that young guy that spoke. And just to let you know, a really interesting thing about our program, it wasn't all sheep and beef and dairy guys, it was happy, forestry, um, that young guy, he was in a farm machinery place. But he said that, um, what he didn't realise, that everyone saw him as a butthole, and that he was quite, they found him really abrasive in that. And he's saying how he learnt that, the, how the guys in his team saw him. He said he changed his approach completely. But I mean, it's, it, I think it's um, hats off to him that he could recognise that was him. And he's gone from where... His, his boss said uh, we thought he'd be stuck in that position because he didn't seem to be able to, he wasn't having the impact we hoped to where he's going to a national role. Mm. So to me, one of the key things is being aware of who you are and then being aware mm. of how others are. Can you change your behaviours? So and then we had the 2OC layer and what we found was it wasn't just the owners, it was actually the next level down. So we adapted the program mm. to include them and then they learnt how to lead and manage people. Because people are our greatest challenge, but they're also our greatest asset if we know how to treat mm. them well. So it was about the workplace environment, it was about communication, um, it was about walking into conflict because it's not going to go anywhere. Um, 
we focused on well-being and how, and how to mitigate stress and, and look for the signs mm. in a team. So it was all the principles of leadership that you could mm. wrap up. But that 2IC layer actually became a really powerful mm. one when we realised actually they were doing more leading mm. and managing than the people above them. And I think, and just adding to Jenny's point there, I think the, the involvement <laughs> of the whole team profiling everyone and making it a team thing um, actually makes the responsibility and accountability for for making an effort with communication and not making shitty assumptions is everybody's problem in the team, not when everyone's responsibility. It's not just up to the boss or the manager or whoever to try and make that happen. It, once it was kind of down and shared, you know, it's just known and, you know, you and I know and the team knows that we have this thing that's difficult to navigate between us, but we've declared it and we're trying to to do it and others can then help and triangulate into that and notice it and call it out and say, look, that's Andrew being a bit of a dick again. Like, you know, he's trying not to do that. He told us that. But, <clears throat> and that just, so some of the teams really ran with that, that kind of shared um, transparency. So it's, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and he everyone knows you're... Yeah. The program, so, know. <laughs> and everyone knows and you're the lazy one that won't get out from under the tree. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But so I think that's that, that's that common language and the transparency and the um, accountability deep within the team. And that's actually what so many farmers really need. They really desperately don't want, most of the ones I've seen, don't actually want to be having to poke and prod every single team member. They really want high initiative teams that can get out and get on with stuff and be accountable and be trusted. And that does take a special type of a leadership and a special kind of a level of trust and communication in, within a team. It doesn't just happen. <clears throat> and that's one of the biggest disconnects. Any more questions? Okay, um, thank you Steve, Andrew and Penny. Um, it was really informative and I hope you guys all got a lot out of that. Um, I know being part of that um, pilot, I got a huge amount out of it and it's a really important tool in my toolbox going forward now. So.